For those of you who have not heard yet somehow that Starfield has gotten an update, it's gotten some news, here we are. We've arrived. They short, sort of shadow dropped this. This is an announcement for release date and the reveal announcement. So they're announcing the announcement. It's a whole thing. But let's see what this looks like. This is Constellation Star Station LO868. Welcome aboard. showing signs over another one of those big anomalies. Maybe you catch a smile and uncover the source of it all. September 6th. Hey everyone, from myself and everybody here. It's Todd! Hold on, I'll get our Todd out. Okay, while he does this thing, I'll get our Todd out. Bethesda, we are so excited to finally tell you when Starfield is coming out this year. You know, we have poured ourselves into this game and even I'm surprised how much we can pour. It is large. Uh, we're playing the game. Yeah, it is, the time. Todd. Shout out over here to lead producer Tim Lamb. Old school fans, you may remember him from the Oblivion making of video where he's sitting on a similar sofa doing oh, similar no things. Oh, no way. I know that exact video I just rewatched recently. That's hilarious that he's still there doing this. But also, uh, this June, we're going to bring you into the studio and give you a deep dive in the game at our Starfield Direct. There's so much that we- June 11th, here's the thing. I would love to do that live, but I'm gonna be real. Our second baby is due on the 10th. And Lachlan came exactly on his birthday, or his due date. So of course he came on his birthday. <laughs> he came on his due date. So I just wanna be real. Might not be able to live stream this because we may either currently be having a baby or we may have just had a baby like a day before. If this, if we have the baby like, you know, a few days early or a week early, then we can probably stream it. But I, I won't make any promises. But either way, I can film like a reaction from the hospital room and offer my thoughts on it. So we'll still. I was born on my birthday too. Yeah. Live stream from the maternity ward. Nikki would love that, I'm sure. We still have to show you. <laughs> the game has many of the hallmarks that you'd expect from us, but it's also a very unique experience. And again, thank you all uh, for all of your excitement about the game, your support, your comments. We really do uh, read it all. And look, we know you've waited a long time to play something new from us. Believe it or not, we're kind of the same. Uh, we miss it. And we really just can't wait for you all to play it. So thanks. And we'll see you soon. I'm intrigued. Yeah. A little so boss fight. Oh. What is this? Oop. Really, just can't wait for you all to Stephen play Constantin it. Stefan Constantine, do me trash. Oh. Super chatted five dollars and forty-one cents. Thank you. Hi, Luke. I hope this Hi. covers your expenses for investigating and commenting on the story of Masabumi Hasono smiley face. Masabumi Hasono? What is that? Masabumi. So is this the trick to get me to Google it? Oh, wait. I do. I do remember this. Yes, he's one of the beep, one of the, the like survivors from the Titanic, but it's like a whole thing. Interesting. I'm going to keep that tab open. Thank you for the 25. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, I'll investigate that. Uh, I mean, 
what I was going to test, I dude, I freaking love his watch so much. I know it's irrational, but I just do. We miss it. Um, what I wanted to see, I think this version, yeah. They're playing a 30 FPS version of the game. It's occasionally even less than 30. Because this is a 60 FPS clip. And yet we can clip forward two, two frames. Now it could be that this section of video is only filmed in 60. I think this is how we could test it though. To see if their heads move with the camera each frame. One. No, I think it, what it might be, they might be going to 30 frames for these cutaways. I don't know. Either way, it's kind of kind of stupid. Um, I don't know. The, the question with all of this is definitely whether or not performance will live up to the expectations. Does he still wear the visor and everything? He does. He's wearing the visor, and in that old clip, he was wearing a visor while working indoors. <laughs> What a Chad. Uh, I don't know. My my guess, I'd put money. Maybe I'm a Debbie Downer. I'd put money on this still launching pretty broken. I'm going to be real. I would guess. I just, in my opinion, Bethesda has like never, as far as I can tell, released a polished product. And like never. Like ever. Definitely not the last like 15 years. So what on earth makes you think this time will be different? While implementing brand new like tech to have a thousand like a thousand planets, like come on. Never. <laughs> uh recap is pretty straightforward. It's coming September 6th. Um this is all they really dropped was September 6th of 2023 and Make of that what you will. Um, but people are like, oh, it's basically been delayed a year because it was supposed to come out last year. So they're basically delaying it a full year just for polish. And listen, I had heard from somebody within Xbox's hierarchy that they were going to be pushing this back a little. Uh, or that they were rather, um, I got it backwards, that they were going to hit their target by the end of 2022 because the game was in heavy polish mode, which apparently is what a lot of Xbox people were under the impression was going on. But people within Bethesda were like, no, 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 no. We're not in polish. We're in like finish this thing. We're not even there yet. So the fact that they weren't allegedly, they weren't in the polish phase, even at the end of last year, makes me think that Probably not going to be super polished. I think they're trying, but Bethesda literally has never released a, a polished product. And after Fallout 4, everybody's like, okay, well, this next time they're going to learn. Then Fallout 76 came. And then everybody's like, after Fallout 76, this time they'll learn. I'm just like, we've been saying this for 20 years. Come on. I don't, I just don't think so. Um, to be fair, let me be completely fair with this, okay? I don't want you to think I'm being like ridiculous. There can be bugs in a game, and it can still be good. It can still be worth playing. It can even still be a great game on launch day with some bugs. Um, there's no doubt about it. You can have a phenomenal game with plenty of bugs and glitches and things. However, the standard for quality goes up to counterbalance that. Um, in the same way that like our, our good old MS Paint example goes, um, if we are evaluating this stuff on like this basic scale of let's just do brush thick nice and thick boy nice there's a good girl okay and we're doing like this Boop. um this is the midpoint let's say this is the point when you're a hater and then this is the point when you're sold and you're a fanboy you should be hoping to start like here in the dead center 
fairly evaluating the game. And the thing is with bugs, that should pull you this way. But if the game's amazing, you could get pulled all the way back over here because the game is so freaking good, you just don't care, right? And that's what I'm hoping to see. My experience, like Fallout 76, it wouldn't be this small of the line. Fallout 76 would be like all the way down here past the barrier. And then they came out with like some, like, oh, well, they have some, uh, they've got some good stuff with maybe trying to think of a good thing Fallout 76 has uh they have like a good community and great weapon crafting and base building okay well that might pull us up to like here but then you look at oh and they basically like they knew this was broken they sold a broken product to their fans and kind of scammed them out of all this money you look at the canvas bag thing the rum debacle all of these things that they did fallout first and that pulls it back down here where it's really really hard to come to any conclusion other than this is a terrible terrible thing <laughs> okay my hope with Fallout 76 is that tech issues bring it to like here and then the rest of it brings it back up a little more positively that's my hope fingers crossed we'll see stefan constantin do me trash super chatted thank you stefan and 41 cents game will be bad technically but highly versatile in development and such people will lament visuals and bugs but praise the gameplay versatility. That's kind of my impression too, Stefan, I think so. Also, thank you, Salvador, for your, your uh, two pounds. Pull baby names. <laughs> Star Child should be in the running. <laughs> I'll tell Nikki. <laughs> like, I know you had a baby name in, in mind, but we did a poll. <laughs> Big Chungus won. I don't know what you want from me. It's what chat shows. <laughs> um, so... I, I don't know. I, I think I think you're right, probably, Stefan, that people will praise the core mechanics, the design, as it were. The design, Todd, will praise the design. Um, should I just hold on? Should I do this? We got to give Todd his own spotlight. There we go. Um. <laughs> Love it, Todd. So I think you're right. They probably praise the design, the the ideas behind it, the broad strokes things. But when it comes to the implementation and the actual quality of life playing the game, it'll probably be a bit of a mixed bag, I would, I would assume, based on what they've said before uh, or what they've done before. Because Fallout 4, like, I can look at Fallout 4 and I can say there's a bunch here that's like, really good right there's a lot with fallout 4 that's actually well done there's there's a great like um gun crafting system base building the game is massive the um the combat is a huge step up from previous bethesda games the world building is great there's all sorts of really really good things that fallout 4 does but the quality of the experience because of bugs that launch failed expectations people were thinking it was going to be more of an rpg than it actually was um all of these other things kind of hampered the experience but now you play fallout 4 and i think you can have a really really good time um but the the big question is just all of this um and in terms of hype this is something i've also mentioned before in terms of hype i try to steer clear of hype as much as i can full stop across the board just because I think in general it's a bad thing. I think more often than not, it probably hurts a player more than it helps the player. Because, like, look at Hogwarts Legacy. People gave me crap for trying to piss on the parade, which I wasn't trying to do. But I was trying to be like, okay, guys, before we get, like, stupid, crazy hyped to the point where we, like, can't sleep. We're waiting for this game so bad and we're so excited before we get there, let's keep a level ahead. And if it's awesome, we'll be very surprised and pleased. And if the game sucks ass, then we'll be like, yeah, well, I didn't get too hyped, right? Like, either way, it's a win-win if you're skeptical, right? If you keep the level ahead and the expectations in check, you'll be thrilled TDK super or, chat or not. $99.99. Oh, Jesus, Give TDK. Todd a kiss. Oh, Todd a kiss. Well, I won't give him the type of kiss I normally do in the nighttime, but I'll just... Mwah. He's scruffy today. 
He's scruffy. He hasn't shaved since I got him. Can you believe that? What a punk. <laughs> Thank you for the 99, dude. That's very generous. Thank you, TDK. That's extremely generous. Thank you. Um, <laughs> can you imagine? It's like, dude, I've, I've mentioned this before. Back when I got Todd, okay, we were like a kind of small channel. I'm peaking the audio. I'm sorry. We were like a small stream. We When I streamed, we had like five people in here. Um, so I didn't stream very often. But when I was doing videos, like the videos would peak at like five, 10,000 views when I got him. And like we were having a good time. But if I posted a video uh, on Starfield or something, the odds were pretty low that somebody like Todd would see it, right? Nowadays, the team will see it. Without a doubt. Like the team will see it. It's what I, I realized, like, I did that 15-second rule thing on Hogwarts Legacy. I got an email from the head guy in charge of the world design at Warner Brothers um, Avalanche. And he's like, yeah, I can't go into detail as to exactly how we design the world, but I, all, I, all I will say is that you got very, very close. So, like, and what he said in his email was that um they had received it he had gotten the link for the video this is like four hours after i published it he had gotten the the link for the video from like multiple members of the team so it's no longer like just meme for the sake of memeing because these people will see it and like we can joke it's why i try not to be like a major dick when it comes to game design choices and things like I can think something is objectively extremely dumb. That thing with Wolong Fallen Dynasty where they routed the parry button to the dodge button. So if you parry quickly on certain attacks because the bosses, some of them have very quick attacks, you'll just dodge because double tapping the circle button dodges and it's also the parry button. So if you're parrying quickly, you'll just randomly dodge and take hits. It's like... Without a doubt, that is a freaking dumb decision. And so, like, I, I'm okay with calling that dumb. But with some of these other videos I've done where we might tear into a game a little bit more, um, you just have to be careful because these are real people working on these games. So, like, I could say, hey, in this game, this skin looks like ass. Whoever designed this skin is a moron. I Like, I could do the memeing thing where I'm just like, some troglodytic buffoon designed this the odds are not that crazy that that person will probably see the video especially if it does decent like if it does you know two three hundred thousand we'll probably see it because like the niche of people watching dedicated videos on some of these games it's the niche is it's a niche <laughs> you know and if you're one of those people they'll probably see it so i don't know <laughs> good let them well with like with the bethesda stuff back in the day um like i straight up said i don't know an explanation for what bethesda's done with fallout 76 that doesn't include them being sort of evil and i stand by that like there's no way i can explain all of the events of fallout 76 without todd and his cronies being complicit in screwing their customers and that's a problem for me I'm not just going to forgive that. When I had like a faux debate with Mr. Matty Plays on this about Starfield hype, I, I basically the disagreement for those of you who didn't see it, the disagreement was just I'm not willing to give Bethesda the benefit of the doubt when it comes to hype over their games. And he is. He's willing to go, eh, it'll probably be pretty good. And I'm just not. Because the, the past behavior has indicated that there's a problem there and it's not reliable. Um, and it's not something that you should like trust them about. And so when I'm like, hey, I think the gunplay looks really, really iffy. There's barely any gore. There's like blood spatter, but there's no gore, which coming from the team that did Fallout 3 and 4, which is known for gore and dismemberment. That's really weird. The um, Thousand Planet thing gets me really, really worried about quantity over quality. Polish is a major concern with a brand new system for this dynamic tech. Uh, there's all these concerns, 
And I'm just like, and on top of this, the last game they made was Borderline Criminal, which is why they got sued by so many people over it. So I'm not willing to hype it up. I'm going to keep it on the DL. I'm not going to hype it up. But I talked to some of these other Bethesda fans and fanboys, and they're just like, eh, but I'm, I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. And I'm just not. And that's, I mean, it's a difference of opinion. I mean, if you're willing to do that and if you think they've maybe redeemed themselves since then, okay. I'm not convinced they've redeemed themselves for Fallout 76, but maybe you do. Um, or maybe you didn't think Fallout 76 was that big of a deal. But I do. And that's the difference, right? So, but going back to the Starfield thing, I think Starfield could be buggy. It could be iffy and have problems. And it could still be a great game don't get that twisted hogwarts legacy i think is a good game probably not great but as like a harry potter game it's great if that's if that makes sense like it's a good game good adventure game but it's a great harry potter hogwarts franchise game right um and that game has a lot of bugs and glitches and it has, especially at launch, performance issues, weird load times between doors and stuff. Um, and so there's there's issues all over the place with that. But I think in general, the pros outweigh the cons. Um, what's the Metacritic prediction? Mine's 85. I guess that's a good question. Everybody put your Metacritic prediction for Starfield in the chat. I want to know where we're at. I guess I could also do a poll. I could probably do that too. Um, how do I do a poll? I have to remember. Start a poll. Okay. Um, Metacritic prediction. <laughs> Ninety-five. This message is sponsored by Todd. I, I I want it to be great. Like this is this is the thing that I think gets lost sometimes. I want the game to be awesome. I would love for there to be a new game for me to be obsessed about. Everybody does. Like, I don't enjoy being the one that has to point out, yeah, there's problems and this thing sucks and this piece sucks and this thing sucks. I want to be in here and just hype it up and be like, oh my God, gaming's at the best point ever. It's not fun to be the one that has to be like, guys, let's keep it in check. I think there's probably problems. Like, I want to get hyped up too. Come on. 76 is the only correct answer. You know it, Luke. You're right, Wyatt. You're right. You got me. Major Bethesda IPs will score high, perhaps with the exception of Outliers, like Fallout 76. Um, yeah, and I, I think this is, again, the thing you have to remember with these, these types of issues is that Review sites assign to reviews those who are familiar with this type of content. So the reviewer that reviewed um, Elden Ring for IGN or GameSpot or wherever, they had played previous FromSoft games and they were probably fans of other FromSoft games, right? And so when you're watching their review, you have to remember this is a review, a 10 out of 10 review from somebody who enjoys these types of games, who likes this studio. So, it, like, it's not always a cross-platform thing. So, of course, like, Bethesda fans are more likely than the general public to be fans of Bethesda's stuff, right? Like, so that's part of the reason I think people look at some of these review sites and they see the scores are generally pretty good for uh, games that are sequels or from a studio that's established. And I think that's mostly why, because it's, it's uh, another game from somebody that uh they already know that they like um salvador thank you for the two pounds like the stream y'all yes everybody like the stream otherwise my mods will beat me they will beat me um metacritic prediction 44 percent of you said 80 to 89 so a b somewhere in the b category 29 percent of you said somewhere between 70 and 79 22% said between 90 and 94, and only 3% said above a 95. Above 95 would be a major accomplishment for a game like Bethesda's. What I mean, what's the Metacritic? Was Skyrim even that high? Even Skyrim, I think their magnum opus didn't achieve that. Fallout 4 was much more spread, I think. 
Um, PS4 is their best platform, which is surprising. I would have thought that like PC would be the best platform for Fallout 4, but apparently PS4 is their best platform for Fallout 4 in terms of score, and it got an 87 there. And then Fallout 3, um, PC got a 91. It's also on the 360 at 93, the PlayStation 3 at 90, and of course Fallout 76. We all kind of know how that ended. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised it's this high. He took my thing!